Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Tuesday, November 8th, 2022. And our top story today, interest rate increases and inflation create insurance service issues. Phil, Dad, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. All right. Good to be with you, Jeff, as usual. Yep. 50 years of insurance experience. Uh, dare I say you're the oracle of Delphi when it comes to insurance questions. And uh, let's talk about, and I'm not aging you. I mean, you came out of the womb uh, right. knowing insurance issues. So let's, let's talk about um, interest rate increases and inflation. All of, we just had the Fed raise rates. It obviously has an impact on the market, but it also, according to you, has an impact to insurance. Where do you see the biggest service issues today when it comes to insurance and insurance premium? Okay, well, let's, uh, there are all types of insurance products available in the marketplace. Uh, any type of permanent product, uh, that is a product that, that for the most part builds cash within the policy, we'll call that a permanent product, uh, is sensitive to market interest rates. What we've seen in recent years is what we call general account products, which are products that credit interest to the policy the funds in the policy predicated on the insurance company's return on its general investment account, interest rates have, have reduced in recent years. Um, for example, people who bought policies, let's say seven, eight, 10 years ago with an assumed general account rate of return of 5%, four and a half, five percent are now seeing those rates for the most part down in the threes. What that does is it impacts policy performance. For the most part, it reduces the cash accumulation, which on certain types of products can therefore reduce the duration of the coverage funded by the amount of premium being paid. And to simplify it, it could necessitate an increase in premium outlay depending on what was originally expected to be paid. So those are general account type of products. So what we're doing in our practice here is, and we do this routinely and have done it for years, is every year or two at the most, we're gonna sit down with a client and review their policies to see how they're performing versus how they were projected to perform when the policies were purchased. In many cases where the, those policies could now be underfunded and those issues need to be addressed. Then you have other types of policies where uh, you have permanent uh, life insurance in typical whole life policies sold by major mutual and some non-mutual companies where dividends are paid. And those dividends may have uh, been reduced beyond the original projections. So those types of policies where they have fixed premiums, but uh, unknown dividends or uncertain dividends, you may have seen an underpayment in some of those dividends over the years. So those types of policies could be impacted. Then you have another genre of permanent policies where you have investments in sub accounts within those policies. They're called variables or indexed policies. Index policies mean the rate of return is predicated on a year over year or year over two year, depending on the sub account you elect, um, rate credited based upon the performance of an external index. For example, the S&P 500 year to year from a point to point. Uh, today to one year from today, for example. And you have policies that have a whole variety of sub accounts. They could look like mutual funds. They could be international accounts. They could be um, equity funds. They could be bond funds. They could be any combination of those that you choose. There could be 50 to 100 choices within a given product. And so all these things need to be monitored. Uh, particularly yeah. in the environment that we're, we're living in now, where rate of return is really an uncertainty at this point. And while interest rates are rising, we're not going to see the, I, I think, in the short term, any major reaction or elevation in general account rates of return. 
because it takes time for these portfolios of the insurance companies to, to turn over. And so that money is going to be reinvested potentially at higher rates, but that's not going to manifest itself in higher crediting rates in the very short term. So that's that's the long winded answer. Yeah, that was actually pretty that was actually pretty long winded, but that's okay because I want to unpack it a little bit more, and, and I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, leeway, a little bit more rope because um, you know you're my father and uh, you know a lot. So let let me ask you. It sounds very similar. Uh, this is the first time for many that they're going through an interest rate, a period of inc- interest rate increases. But it sounds vaguely familiar to what we often hear about with public pensions and pensions in general, where you might have an underfunded pension. Um, am, I, am I right that this is a similar occurrence and people need, just like you would with a pension, and make sure that it is, whether it's underfunded, whether you have to make more contributions, whether you have to change the asset allocation, we're talking about something very similar on an individual or familial level. Well, that's right. On a defined contribution retirement plan, it's the employee for the most part who is electing where his or her invested monies are placed. Not so on a defined benefit plan, although that's a shrinking part of the of the retirement uh, ecosystem. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, you, you what you need to do is you need to sit down with your insurance agent. Um, and or with your other advisors, if you have other advisors, or people you trust and say, how am I doing? How is my money doing within this policy? Is it doing what I originally thought it would do? Is it doing better? Is it doing worse? And you need to address that. Uh, Much like you would with any other type of investment, you need to review things periodically. Um, There are a lot of very competent insurance people out there who do this routinely. Uh, again, meeting once every year or two at, at the outside and reviewing policies. It's also an opportunity when you're doing a policy review to review much more than just a policy. Have your circumstances changed? Has your need for insurance changed? What's new in your life? What's new with your family? How's your health? How are you doing with your other investments? Are you on target? So this is a just a, a lead into a more comprehensive conversation that you should have with your financial advisor or insurance agent to figure out what you need to do to get back on track if you're off track. All right, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about you mentioned turnover, and mm-hmm. I just want to kind of define this term and then talk about what it means for insurance companies. So when you refer to turnover, a lot of general accounts, a lot of insurance companies buy bonds. Obviously, bonds move in, or not obviously, they move inversely to the interest rate environment. So insurance companies are buying bonds, they have to buy new bonds. But what does this mean for an insurance company who has these liabilities on the books um, and they have to go out and buy new bonds in order to support these liabilities? And by the way, new liabilities, what does it mean for the existing accounts, but also future products? I mean, are they looking at newer products that structure securities a little bit differently? How does this affect, and you work with a lot of insurance companies to design products, how does this affect the the future of product design? Well, I I think there's all types of products again, and and not all insurance companies are the same. Some are doing better than others. Uh, Some underwrite more favorably from their vantage point than others. Some invest better than others. So, but by and large, I think what you're saying is that um, insurance companies are, for the most part, cutting back on their long-term guarantees. Uh, And that's not always true, particularly with fixed premium type policies. Um, So I think the guarantees of of duration of death benefit, for example, those, those guarantees are being lessened to some extent, as insurance companies find ways to reduce costs. People are living longer. People are keeping their policies longer. Uh, People are buying insurance at older ages now. I think maybe one of the most rapidly increasing segments of the the consumer uh, population are those age 70 and above. So um, reserving issues for policies have increased. There's all types of factors that that impact pricing in a policy. So I think in general, you're going to see a, somewhat of a, a takeaway uh, in terms of guarantees. 
um, and and shifting some of that risk back to the consumer. Um, that's a very high level overview and <clears throat> certainly not a universal truth. But by and large, I think it's fair to say that's what's going to happen. And that's what is happening. Well, Dad, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about should you buy life insurance in 2023? I have an idea of what you might say, Dad, but I think viewers are going to want to stick around right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-504-8194. Well, Phil, Dad, thanks so much for sticking around with us this morning. Really appreciate having you on the program again this morning. My pleasure as usual, Jeff. Yep, and we're going to tap, you know, we're just doing this. We're not selling anything here. We're just tapping into your uh, your your wisdom here. At least I am, and, and I think the audience is. All right, let's talk about 2023. Uh, we've got two, roughly a less, little less than two months in the year. Uh, we're, we've got interest rate increases, and it seems like there's no sign that the rate increases will uh, slow down anytime soon. At least that's what we're hearing from the Federal Reserve today. That changes uh, moment, to, <laughs> moment to moment. No, but, you know, for the consumer out there, when you're looking at 2023, January 1st, you're starting a new financial plan, a new year. Should you be considering, if you don't own it, should you be considering life insurance products as part of your uh, financial future? Well, I think in general, the answer is yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, be, there's no reason to not look at life insurance for whatever uh, merits it has. Um, certainly, it's a protection device. So at its most simplistic form, it provides a death benefit. So if you haven't accumulated enough assets or you have certain liabilities or uh, you have estate tax issues at the higher end of the marketplace, then there's always a reason to look at what do I need to do to own up to those responsibilities? How do I meet those responsibilities, at least in the short term, or if and when, not if, but when death occurs. Um, but there are other reasons to buy life insurance. Life insurance has in inherent tax advantages. The death benefit is paid out on a tax-free basis in a permanent policy, back to permanent policies. Cash value grows on a tax-deferred basis. Cash value can be taken out of a policy as a post-retirement benefit or a policy loan or withdrawal if, if it's done correctly and monitored properly on an income tax-free basis. So 
life insurance can serve a multitude of, of, of uh, purposes or fulfill a multi multitude of needs. Um, I don't know where 2023 necessarily changes things in terms of the protection side, the death benefit feature. Uh, it may have an impact on how people look at their investment portfolio and should life insurance and building assets in a life insurance policy be a component of an overall investment portfolio at the very highest end of the marketplace, which is not necessarily what we're trying to address here. There are very unique products that help people build significant amounts of money in a very favorable way through life insurance. But I think by and large, the life insurance products uh, give people an opportunity to buy protection and in its least expensive form, they could buy term life insurance. And I think there's in recent uh, months been a, a, a strong move afoot with an older age uh, individuals to buy term insurance, which tells me that much of their other assets or a portion of their other assets are no longer adequate to meet all their future needs. So they're buying some short-term coverage. But if you look at the products across the board, they offer unique opportunities from a tax perspective to add to one's portfolio. Yeah, and, and let's talk a little bit about the term life because I think for someone who maybe, you know, a, a cash value or a permanent life insurance product where that develops cash over time. And again, you're gonna have to deal with the issues we discussed in segment one, which is gonna be fluctuation, interest rate increase, all those, you know, picking your investments in concert with a professional. But let's talk about term life because at, at it's very basic at its core. It's something that is easily accessible to most anybody who wants it, right? They depending on how you how old you are, uh, what company you choose, you can you can be access this vehicle from anywhere online through a broker like yourself or from somebody else. That's correct. Yeah, or through your employer. Or through your employer, correct. So your employer can typically and those most employers, most larger employers offer some form of term life insurance product that employees or may automatically be insured under at the employer's cost and to which they can add additional benefits for themselves, their spouses, their children um, as part of a group policy. Um, typically, all of which could be done without any underwriting, which means it's an automatic. You just elect it, you have it. Or you can buy up coverage through your employer subject to some to answer, satisfactorily answering several questions, health questions or health related questions. Um, so term insurance, or then again, you can just go to the marketplace and buy term insurance. It's a relatively inexpensive product. There's 10 year level term, 15 year, 20 year, 30 year. There's also lifetime term where you're building lifetime coverage with no cash built into it. So there's yeah. all types of products out there and it's very, very inexpensive. And, and very and I think if anything we learned, and I don't want to sound like a carny here, I think that we've learned a lot about COVID, but there are a lot of things that happen should you pass away and you have children or a significant other. Um, first of all, number one, the funeral expenses. I mean, that is not an inexpensive no. event uh, for the family. So that's number one, paying for that. Number two, uh, you know, probate and transfer of assets, all those things. You, sometimes you have to go to probate court um, there may or may not be assets that transfer. So it's relatively inexpensive, but I think maybe people need to understand that it's a balancing act because you're balancing the, the lower costs versus some of these future expenses, which unfortunately we're all going to have. There's going to be death. There's mm -hmm. going to be a transfer of assets over time. Yeah. There are a lot of companies that will that sell term insurance that advertise on television. And it strikes me when I look at this one particular ad and I see this couple sitting in their kitchen, which looks like the kitchen must have cost fifty to seventy five thousand dollars. And they're talking about buying a term policy and he doesn't know if he can afford to buy it. And I giggle to myself because term insurance is so inexpensive. If you're in generally good health and you want to buy let's say a million dollar 10 year term policy and you're 40 years old, you can do that for not much more than a few hundred dollars a year. So there the opportunities to buy coverage, to protect whatever it is you're trying to protect, pay off a mortgage, your kid's education, whatever it may be, 
it's almost inexcusable that you don't do it. Now, not everybody's going to have the additional money to do that. We understand that. But by and large, the vast majority of people out there, at the very least, can buy protection. Not necessarily cash accumulation. That's a different issue and a different um, discussion. But by and large, everybody can buy term insurance. It's yeah. very easy. The underwriting is simple. Yep. Well, Dad, I'm going to leave it there. I mean, there. We, I think this, I kind of view what we're talking about as a PSA, a public right. service announcement. I'm not trying to sell anybody any any product or service, but the reality is, is you got to take a look at these things. And by the way, your your circumstances change year to year. You may get married. You may have children. Uh, you may lose a spouse. You may gain a spouse, whatever, something like that. So we're going to leave it there, Dad. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very right. soon. My pleasure. I hope you found it helpful. And I hope some of your viewers benefit from the conversation. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest security news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, or visit our website and, of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRNAM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.